Resident Evil Genesis, a novelization by Keith R. A. De Candido. Chapter 22. The only good thing to rain about how much the utility tunnels stank was that they knocked out how bad the zombies smelled. Their breath was especially bad, which was weird, because they didn't seem to be breathing. But damn if they didn't all have halitosis overload. She turned around when Kaplan screamed, saw the thing biting him, then shot it. Kaplan, the wuss, kept screaming. Addison reached down and yelled, Grab my hand! That shook Kaplan out of it. He grabbed Addison's hand and let himself be pulled up. That just looked rain. Another zombie jumped her, and she dropped her colt into the wet gunk on the floor. She grabbed the zombie by the head, twisted, then dropped the zombie to the floor. Bending over, she picked up her colt and pointed it right at the next zombie. Just as she prepared to pull the trigger, she realized who it was standing in front of her. J.D.? His face was covered in blood. Scars lined his face. His shirt had been ripped open, and there were cuts and dried blood on his chest. The first day Rain and J.D. went to the firing range, J.D. couldn't stop talking about what a crack shot he was. That was why the CIA stole him from the SEALs, because they valued his skills as a sniper. You know why I think Oswald acted alone? He had asked then. Because one guy could make the shot from the book depository window, if he's got the skill. Me? I got the skill. To prove it, he put on his goggles and earmuffs, grabbed the six-shot revolver the firing range had provided, and fired it into the target, which was thirty feet away. When he pulled it in, all six shots were to the head. Kaplan had been impressed. Warner's eyes had gone wide. Drew kept saying, Well, I'll be doggone, over and over again. But Rain just said, Not bad. That drove J.D. nuts. Not bad? Not bad? What, Chica, you can match that? No, I can't match that, she grinned. Unless I fire left-handed or something. Otherwise, no, I couldn't shoot that badly. Warner laughed. I think she's calling you out, my friend. Screw you, Warner. And screw you too, Melendez. Put your money where your foot is. Rain took the space next to J.D., put on the goggles and earmuffs, moved her target back 50 feet, and grabbed another revolver. Only place my foot's going is up your butt, J.D. She threw all six shots, then pulled it in. J.D. laughed when it came back with only one hole in it. That one hole was between the eyes. One lucky shot. Big deal. Look again, Rain said. When J.D. didn't get it, Drew said, The hole's too big for one bullet. It wasn't until Kaplan played back the video log slowed down that J.D. believed it. All six of Rain's shots were to the exact same between-the-eyes spot. After watching the video log, he turned to Rain with his mouth hanging open. Rain just grinned. Oswald was a wuss. J.D. didn't speak for the rest of the day. But, after that day, he finally started taking her seriously. Now he was dead. She had resigned herself to that the minute those zomboid creeps went all dawn of the dead on him. But she should have known that wasn't the end of it. Not the way this day had been going. She stood there, holding the gun on him, but unable to pull the trigger. He was already dead. She shouldn't have to do this again. Then his mouth fell open like it was some kind of dump truck, and he bit her on the neck. Ah! She grabbed J.D.'s head and yanked him off, his blackening teeth tearing out big chunks of skin off her shoulder. To hell with this. J.D. was already dead. This was just some nightmare. 
she raised the colt and shot JD right between the eyes, just like the target. Guess I still got the skill, she muttered. JD fell back on two more zombies, and that gave Rain the chance to climb up the pipe. It was only when she almost lost her grip that she realized that her hands were now covered in her own blood. The five of them were now up on the pipe while the zombies shuffled around. She held out her hand to check it out. A drop of blood fell from her thumb, and three of the zombies lunged after it. Great. They drink blood. That just figures. Rain? Their motor functions weren't juiced up enough by the stupid virus to let them climb. Heck, the things could barely walk. So they were safe for now. Rain! She finally turned to acknowledge Alice. We have to do something about your wounds. I'm fine. Alice tried to grab her collar to expose her neck wound. Rain smacked the pushy woman's hand aside. I said I'm fine. She held her hand out, watching more blood drip. You like that, don't you? Huh? Huh? You like the way it tastes, don't you? You like the taste of that? She was right. Rain looked over at Kaplan. He was holding his own wound. He also looked about as lifeless as those mindless creatures below them. We're all gonna die down here. No, Alice said. We're getting out, all of us. Rain shook her head. This was but kicking Alice back in business. Not that it mattered. J.D. was dead. She watched him die. Twice. There's a vent over this way. Rain looked up to see that it was Addison talking. Looked like he was scoping out the pipes to find a way out. Bully for him. Maybe he really was a cop. Maybe someday she'd give a damn. Addison led the way across the pipes. They had to crawl since the space to the ceiling was only a few feet. The smell got worse. And was there something in the air? Everything was getting all blurry. Maybe it was tears. Rain wasn't a crier, but damn it, J.D. was dead. So was One and Warner and Drew and Olga. The whole team. Well, except for Kaplan. But that weenie boy barely counted. Addison came to another one of those wire mesh things and kicked it in. He crawled in, then Spence, then Rain. Alice and Kaplan were right behind her. Kaplan, you okay? Alice asked. Kaplan didn't say anything. The little wimp. Wham! Rain turned around. Everything was all blurry still. But she saw that the pipe finally collapsed. Not really a big shock, since the thing wasn't designed to have five people crawling all over it. Kaplan fell into the sea of hungry dead. Alice almost fell in, but Addison and Spence managed to catch her and pull her in. Rain thought she'd be glad to see Kaplan go. His bumbling got one and the others killed, and if he'd remembered the code, then he'd have been the one taken at the door instead of J.D. He deserved what was coming to him. But seeing him mobbed by the zombie hordes of hell, watching him kick and scream and struggle to stay alive, she realized that, damn it, Kaplan was part of the team too and she was not going to let these freakazoids take anyone else. Not even Kaplan. So she took aim, and couldn't make anything out. It wasn't tears. It was the virus. She had it. She couldn't see. Help him! Alice yelled. The words were painful to say. I can't. What are you waiting for? can't focus. I can't see. She couldn't believe it. Six between the eyes shots in a target fifty feet away, but now, less than half that distance away, she couldn't tell where Kaplan ended and the zombies began. If she missed, she'd hit Kaplan. If she missed. Words she'd never had to think before. Suddenly, the colt was ripped from her hands. What the hell? It was Alice. 
She shot two of the zombies in the head, which gave Kaplan the freedom to run up the fallen pipe. Unfortunately, it put him about ten feet away, with no direct access to the vent. Kaplan, hold on, Alice urged. We're going to come get you. We need to cut this wire, then we can throw it to him. Then we can go get him. Hold on. Rain thought Alice was out of her goddamn mind. Kaplan emptied that stupid revolver he carried as a backup. She missed the part where he emptied the Beretta. Or maybe he lost it in the crowd down there. He had one bullet left. That's lucky, he muttered. Then he looked at the rest of them. I want you to go. No, Alice said. We're not leaving you, Kaplan. Yes, you are. No! You can't kill all of them. I'm not going anywhere. I want you to go now. Please, just do it. Just do it now. Please go. For the first time since she joined one's team, Rain respected Kaplan. She never would have given him the credit to take one for the team. Heck, she doubted any of them would. Then again, they'd never come across anything like this. Nobody had. Either Addison or Spence started guiding her down the vent. Normally, she'd tell him to go away, but her vision was getting worse. She didn't trust that she wouldn't bump into a wall or something like that. She heard a single gunshot. Braver man than she thought. Now she was the only one left. Chapter 23 Alice forced herself not to think about the gunshot she'd just heard. As she crawled along the vent shaft, she tried desperately to banish the last image of Bart Kaplan she had, him putting the barrel of the gun in his mouth. Part of her was angry at him for taking such a coward's way out. On the other hand, he had been bitten by those things and they were coming after him. At least by shooting himself in the head, he guaranteed he wouldn't be resurrected by the virus. But she forced herself not to think about it. The shaft dead-ended under a grate. She looked at Matt and Spence, who were right behind her. No words were exchanged, nor had they been since they left Kaplan behind. Getting into a squatting position, Alice slowly stood upright, pushing the grate slowly upward. It opened into one of the corridors, one thankfully short on undead employees of the Umbrella Corporation. She came out first, holding Rain's gun at the ready. Spence was right behind her. Come on, Spence called down to Matt and Rain. Matt climbed out first, then reached down to Rain. Give me your arm. A limp, sweat, and blood-covered arm reached up. He grabbed it and pulled. Rain managed to stumble out. Now up over my shoulder. Even as she did what he said, she fell forward and threw up. To his credit, Matt didn't bat an eyelash. He just waited for her to stop. Thanks. Rain's voice was even more ragged. It was amazing that she was still holding on. Sorry I slapped you around back at the mansion. Matt smiled. It's all right. I probably had it coming. Just hold on. Alice shivered. She wondered if Rain would be so accommodating if she knew the truth about Matt. Right now, though, none of that mattered. All that was relevant right now was that no one else was going to die, not if she had anything to say about it. There was something. Something she started to remember. It was about the colors blue and green of all things. It had been niggling at her in the back of the head, but she dismissed it as another bit of trivial information that wouldn't come to her like what a bathrobe was called. 
Now, though, she was sure that those two colors were critically important. Spence, meanwhile, went over to help Matt with rain, even as Alice continued to scout ahead. So far, the corridor was clear. She wondered how long that would last. From behind her, she heard Rain's voice. When I get out of here, I think I'm going to get laid. Spence chuckled. Yeah, Matt said dryly. You might want to clean up a bit first. Alice was about to laugh too, but then it caught in her throat. She knew this corridor. She knew the lab she was standing next to, looking into the window of. You okay? Matt asked. She turned to see that Matt had left Rain with Spence to check up on her. She must have gone vacant for a second. Blue, green. Blue and green. And rabbits. Then it all came back. In her mind's eye, she could clearly see Mariano Rodriguez and Anna Bolt injecting a white rabbit with a hypo gun. The rabbit was named Daffy for some reason Alice couldn't remember. The hypo was loaded with a corkscrew-shaped tube containing two different color liquids, one blue, one green. Blue for virus, green for the antivirus. Matt gave her a funny look. There's a cure, she said. What are you talking about? Matt asked, sounding confused. There's a cure. The process can be reversed. She turned and looked at Rain, still held up by Spence down the corridor. There's a cure. You're going to be okay. Rain actually smiled. I was beginning to worry. Alice ran into the lab. The entrance was at the top of a raised entryway with a short staircase leading down to the main part of the lab. The unsealing of the doors when Kaplan powered the Red Queen down had reduced the flooding down to the level of the raised entryway, so the room was still knee-deep in water. This was where Mariano and Anna had worked, along with their lab assistant, a big bald guy whose name Alice couldn't remember. They were the ones working on the T-Virus. With a start, Alice realized that she'd seen all of them, Anna was the corpse whose presence floating in this very lab had scared Matt when they first arrived. The bald lab assistant had been one of the ones who first attacked them in the so-called dining hall, and Mariano had been one of the ones trying to kill Kaplan in the tunnel. Jesus. This is where they kept the T-Virus. How do you know all this? Matt asked. She decided to go for broke. Besides... Matt deserved to know. Because I was going to steal it. She turned to look at him. I was your sister's contact. Matt's eyes went wide. You betrayed her. I don't know. You caused all this. I can't remember. She started to move down the staircase, but Matt grabbed her arm. The truth. I don't remember the truth, she said honestly. But she found she couldn't look Matt in the eyes either. Instead, she turned and proceeded down the stairs. She remembered it now. The door on the far end of the room had the vault that held the T-virus. Wading through the sprinkler system water, she was, for the first time since the mansion, eternally grateful for the thigh-high boots as they kept her mostly protected from the frigidly cold, knee-high water. The door leading to the vault required both hands to get open. So, since the dress had no pockets, nor did she have a holster, she set Rain's gun down on a table that was above the water line. Behind her, Matt guided Rain down to sit down on the dry entryway, her legs hanging over into the main lab. Spence, meanwhile waited down the stairs. Alice yanked the door open. She saw the far wall and the plastic glass window that gave a view into the containment unit. Over it were the levers to manipulate the Waldos that manipulated the vials inside. 
Underneath the window was the slot that allowed one access to the contents. The slot was open. Inside, the container for the T-Virus was empty. All 14 slots were empty. Slamming her hands on the open containment unit, Alice cried, I don't understand! She waded back outside and looked at Rain. It's gone. It's gone. It's not there. Rain seemed to deflate before Alice's very eyes. I can't. I just can't. Alice had been so sure, damn it. Was it somewhere else? In the mansion somewhere, maybe? Could they get back there in time? As she walked over to comfort Rain, she wondered what they would do next.